So have you ever thought to yourself, why in the world do I have such a hard time doing my devotions? We get so busy, we get so caught up in doing our schoolwork, taking care of our families, taking care of our kids. It should be something that I'm loving to do. But somehow, I always find myself too busy, too caught up, too distracted. There's so many things in the way. And so I've been thinking, what can we do about that? Shall we begin? First Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18 says, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Always, continually, in all circumstances. These are words that are really difficult for a lot of us. To say that I'm going to rejoice always, to pray all the time or continually, to give thanks in all circumstances. This is a difficult thing to do. How can we do that every single time? There are no exceptions made here though in this passage. For many of us, it's truly a spiritual battle just to be able to pray, just to say, thank you, Lord, just to say, praise you, God. You know, it's so hard for us on a daily basis to rejoice. Today, I wanna just be able to talk about rejoicing and that word rejoice. Sometimes rejoicing doesn't come naturally. It doesn't come naturally to us at all. In fact, there are moments and times in life where we don't want to rejoice. We just want to complain. We want to rant. We want to get, it's, it's just really, really frustrating how some things in life are just not fair. I remember when I was in high school, uh, I wasn't particularly good at math, uh, let alone calculus. I didn't do so well in, in, in math. I mean, I wanted to, Somehow it just didn't work for me. Math didn't really work in my brain. And I was more concerned about what the teacher thought of me and what my parents thought of me, what others thought of me, rather than being concerned why I'm doing the math that I was doing. Throughout the year, uh, I had struggled with that. It was more of a self-esteem issue than it was an actual performance issue. Rather than doing my math for the sake of my own education, I was doing it because I wanted to please my teacher, I wanted to please my parents, I wanted to please the people around me. But how do we begin to rejoice? Rejoicing doesn't come out of shallow thoughts or merely just emotions or convincing yourself that somehow uh, I have to feel better about myself or I have to feel better about the world around me. And It has everything to do with thinking about Jesus and what Jesus has done for you already on that cross. That he's not only died on the cross, but he rose again from the dead for you and I. And to know that Jesus loves me, even if the people around you that you want to love you, don't love you, remember that Jesus loves you. That is probably the most valuable thing that we can hold on to in this life. If we keep living our lives trying to prove ourselves to the people who admonish us, people who criticize us, people who don't like us, people who are always looking at us with uh, critical eyes, then our lives are going to be really difficult. But Paul points us in this direction. He says, rejoice always. He says, rejoice. And he starts off with that because when we are able to rejoice, we are also able to pray. And when we're able to pray, can also give thanks. So start today by rejoicing. Rejoice with me today. Have a good day, everyone.